The American Heart Association and European Resuscitation Council recommend delivering compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute for adults during CPR. The recommended chest compression depth for adults is 2 to 2.4 inches or 5 to 6 centimeters. The recommended chest compression depth for infants is 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters, and for children, it is 2 inches or 5 centimeters. Chest compressions may be continued while the defibrillator is charging. High-performance CPR is best performed by pushing hard and fast, allowing complete chest recoil, minimizing compression interruptions, and avoiding excessive ventilation. Cricoid pressure should not be used routinely during cardiac arrest, as it is no longer recommended. Adenosine and diltiazem are the drugs of choice for treating PSVT. Atropine is no longer recommended for routine use in PEA or asystole. The BLS sequence for CPR has been changed from ABC to CAB. Post-ROSC SPO2 levels should be maintained at or above 94%. Transcutaneous pacing, TCP, is contraindicated in patients with severe hypothermia. Beck's triad refers to three medical signs associated with acute cardiac tamponade. Low arterial blood pressure, distended neck veins, and muffled heart sounds. Intravenous magnesium may help during cardiac arrest due to hypokalemia or torsades to points. In PEA, establishing intravenous or intraosseous access is a priority over endotracheal intubation. Interruption of chest compressions to conduct a rhythm check should not exceed 10 seconds. The intraosseous route is the next most preferred route for drug administration if emergency medical responders are unable to obtain a peripheral intravenous line for a patient in cardiac arrest. The recommended first intravenous dose of amiodarone for a patient with refractory ventricular fibrillation is 300 mg. The recommended assisted ventilation rate for patients in respiratory arrest with a perfusing rhythm is 10 to 12 breaths per minute. The recommended energy dose for biphasic synchronized cardioversion of atrial fibrillation is 120 to 200 joules. The team leader should switch chest compressors every two minutes during a resuscitation attempt. The anticubital vein is the recommended first choice for establishing intravenous access during the attempted resuscitation of a patient in cardiac arrest. Entitled CO2 less than 10 mm mercury is a sign of ineffective CPR. The dose of morphine for ischemic chest pain in adults is 2 to 4 mg intravenously. Shockable rhythms in cardiac arrest include ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Defibrillation is the most important early intervention for a patient in cardiac arrest with a shockable rhythm, VF, or pulseless VT. The distance measured from the corner of the mouth to the angle of the mandible can serve as a useful guide for selecting an appropriate size or pharyngeal airway. Right ventricular infarction and dysfunction is usually considered as a contraindication to nitroglycerin administration in the management of acute coronary syndromes. Administer aspirin, 325 mg chewable, as soon as possible for suspected acute coronary syndrome, unless contraindicated. Rapid transport to a PCI-capable center is recommended for eligible out-of-hospital cardiac arrest patients who achieve ROSC. Deliver one breath every five to six seconds for adult experiencing respiratory arrest with a detectable pulse. If an AD does not promptly analyze the rhythm during cardiac arrest, the next action is to begin chest compressions. Be aware that hypoglycemia can mimic stroke by presenting with focal neurological deficits, so check finger stick blood sugar as soon as possible. The treatment for stable narrow complex tachycardia is adenosine 6 mg rapid intravenous push. Detailed and accurate documentation of the entire resuscitation event is crucial for patient care and future analysis. Post-resuscitation debriefing provides an opportunity for the team to review the event, identify areas for improvement, and offer support.
Avoid using oropharyngeal airways when dealing with conscious patients. Atropine is no longer recommended for routine use in PA or asystole. The three drugs which are involved in the ACLS bradycardia algorithm are atropine, dopamine, and epinephrine. During CPR, intravenous or intraosseous routes are preferred for drug delivery. Endotracheal route is discouraged due to its unpredictability. The recommended dose of epinephrine for pediatric cardiac arrest is 0.01 mg per kilogram every 3 to 5 minutes. In the management of symptomatic bradycardia, be aware of potential causes of bradycardia such as acute coronary syndrome, toxins, drugs, hypoxia, and hyperkalemia. In the treatment for acute pulmonary edema, the mnemonic POND stands for P, position or positive pressure ventilation, O, oxygen, N, nitroglycerin, D, diuretics. The first-line medication for shock refractory VF or pulseless VT is epinephrine 1 mg intravenous or intraosseous. The recommended dose of magnesium sulfate for the treatment of torsades de points is 1 to 2 grams intravenously over 5 to 20 minutes. Continuous waveform capnography is useful as a tool to confirm placement of endotracheal tube. Selic maneuver is no longer recommended for routine use during airway management of cardiac arrest. The time limit for performing percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI, in STEMI patients after arrival in emergency department is 90 minutes. The recommended target temperature for targeted temperature management, TTM, after cardiac arrest is 32 to 36 degrees Celsius. Maintaining an oxygen saturation of at least 94% is the recommended target for patients experiencing chest pain or suspected acute coronary syndrome. Amiodaron is generally avoided during pregnancy and breastfeeding due to potential risks to the fetus or infant. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.